Coming up, make a trusty torch to take on a camping trip. Set up your own space age satellite. Make your friends go mad with a magic mirror. And reel them in with a rope circling trick or two. Whoa, Taryn, stand still or I'll never rope you in with my trusty lasso. Oh boy, the way Dana's sawing that rope, I'll be here for ages. Let's see what Kimberly and the gang are up to while we wait. Yes! The key to a fun camping trip is the preparation. Three cosy sleeping bags, three delicious sandwiches, plenty of water to drink, and most important of all, a good strong torch. Hey, there's a problem with this torch. It's not coming on. Maybe it needs new batteries. I hope this will fix it. Just can't camp out without a torch. Two new batteries, screw it back together. Hmm, still no light. I hate to say it, but this torch is broken. We may have to cancel our camp out. Unless we use our brains and build a better torch. Let's do it. <laughs> This is my blow-up model of the Earth. It looks just like the real thing. Except for the clouds, of course. And one other man-made thing. But I know how we can fix that. Don't leave the galaxy, Grace. I'll be right back. Let's build a satellite and launch it into orbit around the Earth. I'll start with a flat piece of card and make it into a cylinder shape. Grace is making foil-coated space fins. I've blocked up the cylinder. Time to coat it with foil too. This gives our satellite a real space age look. Attach the fins to some little brackets. Add a powerful space jet to help the satellite maneuver into position. And we are ready for blast off. Cool, huh? Satellites floating in space allow us to communicate quickly with people all over the world. When you watch the TV news, pictures from other countries have been beamed to your local TV station via satellite. Radio signals, phone calls and electronic data can all be sent the same way. Our silver satellite is in position above Earth. We can even beam our own signal up to it. Hold that satellite still, Dana. I'm trying to send a message. It says, let's see how Kimberly's gonna make her torch work. <laughs> there. Without a working torch, our camping trip would be chaos. So the girls and I are making our own. First, we need a power supply. We have plenty of new batteries. Join these two together. Make sure you have the lumpy positive end against the flat negative end. Let's put four together for a super powerful torch. Stick one wire on top of the battery stack, wrap the exposed wire around the terminal and tape it in place. Now tape a long wire to the bottom and a bit more tape to hold it in place. There. Next, the lamp. This bulb holder has two terminals on it. Attach one wire to one side, sit the bulb holder on top, then attach another wire to the other terminal. Can you guess what the cardboard tube is for? No, it's not a telescope. It's going to be the body of the torch. Carefully slide the batteries into the tube bottom first. Keep it coming. OK, stop. I'll just tape the bottom wire around the end of the tube and push two pins into the side of the tube. Attach the wire running from the light bulb to one pin and the wire running from the battery stack to the other. Now when I connect the two pins with this paper clip, we have light. Brilliant! The paper clip makes a little switch. One last thing. Cover it with black card to protect the wires. There, we're ready to see how powerful our torch is. Mmm, <laughs> yum! 
noodles are our favourite. My buddy David says they make him super strong. Time to see how super our hero really is. I'll just roll up some paper towel and make it into a thick rope. Hey, David, are you strong enough to break the paper in two? Come on, tough guy, show us what you've got. Ha ha, he hasn't been eating enough noodles. Come on, David, it's only a piece of paper. Here, let me help you. I will just dip the paper into this glass of water. Let it soak right through. Now I'll try it, muscle man. No problem. It's easy to break in half when the paper's wet. Most paper we use today is made from wood chips that are broken down into very thin cellulose fibres. These fibres are then rearranged and dried out to make paper. When the paper towel is twisted, it becomes strong because the cellulose fibres are tightly packed together as they are in a piece of wood. But when the paper gets wet, capillary action draws water into the spaces between the individual fibres. This weakens their grip on each other and so it weakens the paper. Wow! This paper towel sure is tough stuff. Time for our secret weapon. A glass of water. Aha! We're not so weak after all. Wow! Fancy using paper to make a rope. Yep, and get set, cos I'm about to join Jordan in the rope circling business. Lara and I are working on our rope tricks. Here goes. Come on! This lasso business is harder than it looks. There's got to be an easier rope trick we can master. Yeah, let's go! Prepare to be amazed, Lara. This is an ordinary loop of string. I'll flush it on the water's surface. Now take this toothpick. Your challenge is to make the string into a circle shape without touching it. No, she's never going to do it like that. Hmm, interesting technique. It's just not happening for you, is it, Lara? You better let me show you how it's done. I just take a tiny drop of this washing up liquid and trip it into the middle of the string loop. Pretty cool, eh? The string circle changes shape. Now that's a foolproof rope trick. A uh, string trick, anyway. Water molecules like to stick together, giving a bowl of water like this one a skin across its surface. This surface tension is broken when detergent is added. The drop of detergent only breaks the surface tension inside the string loop. The water molecules outside are still pulling on each other, so they retract, taking the string with them. I think I got the hang of this rope trick thing now. Hey! Kimberly spends so much time in front of the mirror because it tells her she's the fairest of them all. Well, she can't believe everything a mirror tells her. Wait till Kimberly meets my mad mirror. She won't believe her eyes. First, I'll glue two identical mirrors together. Back to back, plenty of strong glue on one side. And press them together. Now we have a two-faced mirror. Dad cut me two wooden handles from an old broomstick. Lots of glue on the end of a handle and stick it right in the middle. Once that's dried out a bit, we can do the same thing on the other side. There. Glue the handle in exactly the same place on both sides. My glue is dry and my magic mirror is ready to cast its spell. Time to go find Kimberly. She's still in front of that mirror. Hey Kimberly, try my latest invention. Hold it by the handles and turn it with one hand while you look in the other side. Freaky, huh? Why isn't your right hand doing any turning? See, Kimberly? Mirrors just love to deceive you. Part of Kimberly's brain thinks that the hand in the mirror is her right hand. 
However, it's really a reflection of her inactive left hand. While Kimberly is turning the handle, nerves in her right hand tell her brain that the hand is moving. Her brain expects to see the hand moving. When it doesn't, it becomes confused, giving Kimberly a very strange feeling indeed. Mirror, mirror on the wall. Who's the cleverest of them all? Just goes to show, Donna, you can't believe everything you see. That's for sure, but it certainly helps if you can shed a little light on it. Torchlight, for instance. <laughs> it's time to see how much light our homemade torch makes. Hmm, not bad. But it's not really making a spot that we can point. We need to focus the light into a beam. Let's go, campers. <laughs> this torch has something ours doesn't. There's a silver reflector behind the globe. Better make one for our light and see if it helps. I'll cut a cone shape from this water bottle and line it with kitchen foil. There, a silver reflector. Nice job, team. Stick it in place with plenty of sticky tape. I think we may have a better light beam this time. Hit the lights, Olivia. Hey, that makes a big difference. Our little bulb is making a very bright beam now. Pressing the paperclip down until it joins the pins allows electrons to travel through the entire circuit as electricity. The wire inside the light bulb is made of tungsten, a metal that becomes so hot that it glows when electricity is passed through it. The inside of the light bulb is a vacuum. That means there's no air in there. Because combustion needs oxygen, the vacuum stops the tungsten from combusting or burning away. Our torch is making camping out good fun. <laughs> good night, Mr Gnome. See you in the morning. Hey, Olivia's eating the midnight feast. Lucky we had a torch to catch her in the act. Uh oh, that's the end of that little midnight caper, I think, Taryn. <laughs> yep, and it's the end for us too, Dana, because we've come to the end of another show. See, See you next time. time.